Hello, everyone. Welcome to Evolutionary Church, where our mission is a planetary awakening in love through a unique self-symphony. And together, we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Evolutionary Church. I'm Lisa Witter. I'm the Executive Vice President for the Center for Integral Wisdom, and I am your moderator and the executive producer of this gorgeous gathering that we do every week called Evolutionary Church. And in Evolutionary Church, we are connected. We are whole. We are expressions of the entire process of creation, and we are activating a new humanity, as we say. We are awakening as homo amor universalis. And as we say every single week, we aren't just a church. We are also a synagogue, we're a mosque, we're a temple, we're a zendo, we're all of it. No one is excluded, everyone is absolutely included. And we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse that's awakening in us, as us, and through us. Welcome home, everyone. We're so excited and delighted to be here with you this gorgeous Saturday morning afternoon, evening, depending on where you're joining us from. So um, if you could, if you haven't already opened up your chat box to say hi, let us know that you're joining us and where you're joining us from. We invite you to do that. If you're new to Evolutionary Church, if this is your first time, let us know that too so we can give you a huge evolutionary hug, virtual hug. We are truly a global movement. We have our congregation or everyone that comes here is from around the world. Um, and it's, it's quite a beautiful thing that we're doing here. And I just want to remind, I sometimes have to remind myself that we are doing something that's never been attempted before. We are creating a sacred, holy place to gather every Saturday morning that is not in any one physical location. That physical location is your house <laughs> and your computer with us here globally. It's never been done before. So sometimes I, I, I stop and have to wonder like, oh my gosh, we are truly doing something amazing. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for being here, being a part of it and really stepping in and saying yes, as Barbara and Mark always say every week. So um, again, open up your chat box, say hi. Um, let us know where you're joining us from. Our replays are, our broadcasts are always recorded, so you will get a replay email within 24 hours or so. And one thing that we always invite you to do is in actually in every single email we send, we have an invite link. So that's the way that we're going to grow this movement. That's the way that we're going to grow Evolutionary Church. That's the way we're going to evolve love in public culture is by sharing the love. So we invite you to invite your family, invite your friends. Um, the link is in every single email that we send. So right after church, when you get your replay email, invite someone that you know that might be um, benefit from coming to Evolutionary Church. So um, with that, I'm going to move into our broadcast, our, our sermons and our, our beautiful session for today. For those of you that might be new, I'd like to give a little bit of a, a, an overview of what to expect in the coming hour. I always begin with a Dharma recap that brings us forward from last week, our evolutionary love codes from last week to this week, and then we enter into evolutionary church with Barbara opening up, setting a resonant field for us, and then we move into our prayer with Mark, and then we move into both of our sermons with Barbara and Mark, and we tie it all up somewhere around the top of the hour. So you can expect to be here for about an hour with us and then move on and into your day completely inspired and uplifted and ready to evolve love <laughs> in public culture. So with that, I will move into our Dharma recap. By the way, we are in week 112 of Evolutionary Church, and we are just beginning. This is just the beginning. So I'm not going to go through our entire code because that's part of our resonance, but we, what we've been working on is this piece about our unique personal 
transformation. That was really what we were working on last week. So your unique personal transformation that transforms the entire story of reality, as we see that, in, that transforms that the whole thing can always be found in your unique crisis of intimacy. In that place where you've left something out of the circle. Each one of us has a place in our life where we have a crisis of intimacy. And that crisis of intimacy could, could come from a lot of things. Last week, Barbara and Mark talked about finding your personal crisis of intimacy by locating your unique point of discomfort. And so for some of us, that point of discomfort might be around letting in the pain, letting the pain in. That was Barbara's gorgeous story that she shared with us last week, like really letting the pain in. Now for others, your point of discomfort might actually be about claiming the joy that's rightfully yours to own. But in either case, when we close our hearts to our discomfort, when we leave discomfort outside of the circle, instead of bringing it in, instead of integrating it, then what happens is that we suffer from a personal intimacy crisis. So the invitation in evolutionary church is to evolve our capacity for intimacy by identifying our personal point of discomfort, by opening our hearts and bringing it in and feeling it. The, evolution, the, the invitation in evolutionary church is to know the truth, which is that reality intended you, reality chooses you, reality recognizes you, reality desires you, reality needs you, and to know that you can let in all of the pain and all of the joy because you're always held in the arms of the infinity of intimacy. Always, in all ways. When we evolve our capacity for intimacy, we participate in the evolution of love because our personal, unique transformation transforms the entire thing. So with that, I invite us now to enter into the holy, the sacred space of evolutionary church as Barbara sets the resonant field for us. Barbara, I hand it over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Lisa. <clears throat> I'm going to read this code very slowly first. And then when I do my sermon, we're going to explore every one of these lines in our own lives. So as I read it <clears throat> in a resonant field, just be thinking of what it means to you line by line. Reality is driven by pleasure. So you would be thinking of what is your deepest pleasure that's moving you. The highest pleasure is transformation. <clears throat> the highest pleasure is transformation. Every human being <clears throat> is born to affect a unique personal transformation. You'll be thinking of what unique personal transformation are you born to express? Every human being is born to effect a unique social transformation more than that just personal. Wisdom is knowing what is yours to transform and what is not. Huge, huge importance. You can spend lifetimes doing what is not yours to do. The highest transformation is the transformation of everything. The highest knowing is to know that your radical commitment 
to your unique transformation is what transforms everything. And I pass my word to you, Mark. Thank you, beloved. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is so good to be with you, beloved B and Lisa and everyone in church and friends. Wow. Right? If I had to characterize the quality of church, right, I would characterize it with two qualities. And one quality is outrageous love, right? Evolutionary love. Right? There's a sense of outrageous love. Right? And outrageous love, if you remember, right, in church, right, right? Outrageous love, if you remember our code. And when we say church, we mean church and synagogue and communion and, and a dash theistic, non-classical theistic center, right? You know, so one of our core frameworks is we live in a world of outrageous pain, and the only response to outrageous pain is outrageous love. And so we are a band of outrageous lovers, right? Disguised as a church. And we are a revolution. We are a wave, a cascading wave of the original evolutionary love that initiated and animated the original flaring forth of creation that is now awake and alive in us. It's not ordinary love. It's not a harlequin romance, although a harlequin romance on a good day could be an expression, right? A spark of that originating wave of outrageous or evolutionary love. So that's one, right? There's this quality of, of incredible, right? Outrageous love. And there's a second quality. And the second quality is what we might call ecstatic urgency. And I'm going to write a code right, about ecstatic urgency this week. Right? But ecstatic urgency is a particular quality. It's ecstatic, right? It's ecstatic in the sense that it's beyond self. And it's ecstasis in the original Greek. It's not just self in the sense of small self. And yet at the same time, it's not merely the spaciousness of being, gorgeous as that is, but it's urgent. It's the urgency of becoming. And we live in a moment in time which is urgent. Right? It's difficult to imagine that in the last 23 days in the United States, there was a school shooting virtually every other day. What does that mean? What does that mean that our kids are killing each other? And when they're not killing each other, right, they're actually committing suicide. Right? The rate of teen suicide in the world now is astronomical, and the rate of suicide is approaching nearly a million people a year. Right, what does it mean that we have nomadic retirees in the United States? Just one example, who actually can't afford literally their meals, so they live in their car and go from place to place. Right? What does it mean right, that actually the income inequality is becoming so dramatic that we're actually living in a world in which people can't actually take care of their basic needs of human dignity and as we move towards automation and in automation and jobs, more and more people in the world are becoming, from the perspective of the elite, actually extra, useless, not needed. And we talked about this in our board call yesterday for the Foundation for Conscious Evolution for the Center for Integral Wisdom. And we talked about right, the, the evolutionary revolution that needs to take place, right? an actual sweeping of reality with a new set of metic structures, of, of source codes, Right, of evolved source codes, right, which emerge from a new universe story. And if you really want to get the essence of what we believe about transformation, right, and our code here is about transformation today, I want to take this into prayer, right? If you really want to get what we really believe is, is that to truly transform, you have to transform based on a new universe story. You can't just transform based on feeling good. You actually have to have an insight, a new insight into your actual true identity, right? What's your new best understanding based on the best sciences interior and exterior of who you are? What's the new narrative of identity? What's the new narrative of power? And those two have to derive from a new universe story. And from that place, we have a new narrative of transformation. And Sally Adams, this is for you, right? This is core in the codes. There's a new universe story up here, I don't know if you can see up here on the screen, but I'm making it up here with my hands, right? So there's a new universe story at the top of the screen. Then you have two arrows going down, new narrative of identity, new narrative of power. 
From there, right, then we then get to a narrative of transformation. Transformation only happens for realsies. That's our big Latin word from last week, right? And you know, I hope you've all been studying Latin this week, but right? it only happens for real when we actually have an experience of literally a new narrative of identity, actually realize who I am. And so today we're gonna to talk about, and as we go into prayer, I wanna just kinda of add one piece. And, it, and it's a critical piece, and we'll, we'll talk about it more next week, but I wanna just put it in the pot so we can take it into prayer together, which is, let's add something to our code, okay? Right? Barbara resonated our code with us so gorgeously, and I can't wait to hear the sermon, right? And, and we're gonna, we're gonna sermonize and symphonize. We actually don't sermonize, Barbara and I, we symphonize, I hope. Okay, so we're gonna symphonize together. So we, we say, right, the highest right, reality is driven by pleasure. The highest pleasure is transformation. Every human being born to affect a unique personal transformation. We talked about that the last two weeks, right? A unique social transformation. Wisdom is knowing what's yours to transform and what's not. And I'm reading quickly because Barbara already resonated it so beautifully. It, it doesn't need any more resonance. We're resonating. The highest transformation is the transformation of everything. Let's just add one piece, okay? Right? And this is a big one, okay? And the highest, right? We talk about kind of what's the highest pleasure is transformation, right? I want to add the following, right? And the highest, let's put it this way. The highest pleasure is transformation. And we're going to add one more sentence. And transformation is the highest form of power. Okay? It's a big deal. Right? The highest pleasure is transformation. And transformation is the highest form of power. So we're going to talk about that this week. Right? Because one of the most important things we need to do is we need to reclaim power as a value. Power is a critical value. I want to invite everyone this week to be power hungry. Be power hungry. Desire power. Power is gorgeous. Okay? So when we say the highest pleasure is transformation, right, right after the highest pleasure is transformation, we're in real time. Usually we write codes before church. We're adding in real time and live. We're live unplugged in church. After the highest pleasure is transformation, and if anyone could write it down for us, that'd be awesome. We'll actually write it in. If anyone can actually write that in, not transformations empowerment, Sally. Okay? No, I want to be really precise. Okay, the highest pleasure is transformation, right? Right? And what's, what, what was the sentence we just had, Lisa? Right, I can't even remember it myself. Okay? What was the sentence? The highest pleasure is transformation, right? And transformation is, anybody? Anybody got it? Transformation is, Barbara, did you got it? Did you write it down? I can't hear you. I can't hear you, love. Rolling in the scroll in the chat box. Rolling in the scroll. What do we got there? Let's take a look. Nice form of power. And transformation. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Thank you, David. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Val. Right? And right, the highest, right? So transformation, right, is the highest form of power. Right? Right? The highest pleasure is transformation. Right? Right? And it's a very, very, very big deal. The highest pleasure is transformation. And transformation is the highest form of power okay transformation is the highest form of power and we're, we're inviting ourselves to desire power to be if anyone wants to write it down to be power hungry right because we say in church god's not just the infinity of power god's the infinity of intimacy it's one of our core codes but god's also the infinity of power and power is unbelievably important right and it's not power over in the old sense right? It's power for, that's one dimension of it. It's power for, not power over, only power for, but it's not just power for in that kind of beautiful new agey liberal sense, right? Of oh, power, I'm in service. That's one form of power and it's beautiful. Power for is real, not power over, not dominator hierarchy, but power for, but power for what, right? It's not just service, right? It's power it's the power of transformation itself. And I woke up Barbara in the middle of the night and I wanted to call you at four in the morning, but I thought you might not have appreciated it, right? So, um, so I didn't, but I was tempted, 
And I was thinking about our conversations about power. And Lisa, we talked about power. When you think about it, right, reality is driven by pleasure. Right, everybody? Pleasure, it's, it's, the, it's allurement that drives all reality. Right? And then that pleasure brings together right, and affects transformation. What, what drives the transformation? What drives the transformation is the evolutionary impulse. Right? The evolutionary impulse, the interior quality of the evolutionary impulse is pleasure and power mixed together. Isn't that awesome? Pleasure and power right, converge in the evolutionary impulse and they affect transformation. So what we're trying to do, right, right, we try and do today is we try and affect transformation without power. But power, right, power, literal power, enormous power, the power to transform, right, is this incredible power. And here's the big sentence. And I want to ask somebody to write this down because I'm going to forget it, right? I might not even remember to say it right now. It's just kind of buzzing through my head, okay? We can't have the power to transform the world if we don't have the power to transform ourselves. It's a huge freaking sentence. And I apologize for the word freaking, okay? But it's a huge sentence, okay? If we don't have the power to transform ourselves, we don't have the power to transform the world. And so often, right, the reason transformation is not working, the reason all the NGOs, right, aren't working is because actually we're trying to bypass personal transformation and transform the world. If I don't have the power to transform myself, my unique personal transformation, then I won't have the power to transform the world. And then finally, right, and then now it's going to all go into prayer. We're going to pray and then go right into Barbara Sherman. She's going to lift us all like a prayer to the sky. Let's put just the last piece together. Okay, here's the last piece. So my unique personal transformation, which is based on my power of personal transformation to transform that which is uniquely needing transformation in me. And I want you to get this. You can spend all your life doing good works all your life doing great things, all your life giving great speeches. You can write 20 books, you can write phenomenologies, right? You can write diaries, right? right? Whatever we do, right? But that's actually what we do naturally. That's just what we do, that's who we are. But there's a point of personal transformation where we have to reach. We have to reach and we have to shift and we have to repattern, right? And evolution's greatness is when evolution repatterns. When we're able to repattern, repatterning is true power. Okay, does everyone grab that sentence? Can everyone grab that for me? Repatterning, repatterning, let's be together, right? Lirazi, Shahati, right? okay, let's be together here. Let's, let's grab it. Repatterning is true power. If I can repattern, that's my personal transformation. That personal transformation mystically, right, affects everything, affects the entire field, right? It mystically transforms everything. When I have that power of transformation, and then we come together, that's motivated by outrageous love. Right, outrageous love of myself and of reality and knowing my impact on reality, then we're a band of outrageous lovers. Then we don't fall apart based on personal politics. We don't fall apart based on non-communication. We don't fall apart based on non-intimate divisiveness between us. Right? Divisiveness, right? Competition, rivalry, rivalrous conflict within the church, rivalrous conflict within the New Age movement, disguised under all sorts of masks of piety actually has prevented us from coming together because instead of really being committed to transforming the planet, we're really committed to our own labels. We don't really synergize. We don't come together. We don't support each other. We're pretending to be transforming the planet, but really everyone's running a commodification game and they just happen to be selling transformation or happen to be selling evolution or happen to be selling whatever we're selling. That doesn't work. It's only if we personally transform and we're able to give up something precious, to repattern our egoic structures, to re-identify as personal unique self-expressions of the evolutionary impulse, and to actually feel that alive in us, to know, Barbara, as you love to say, that my personal unrest is the divine unrest. Right? It's only then that we can be homemates, not just soulmates. Soulmates are looking for personal fulfillment in each other's eyes. Homemates are looking at a vision together, joining genes. No, joining genius, right? And we put that homemade idea together with that joining genius idea, right? And what Barbara and I are trying, if we're trying to model anything here, right, it's that. It's that we can love each other enough to have two teachers come together and not be branding, but to actually model what joining genius means in evolutionary love. If we can model that, and it takes, it takes heroism. 
It takes fierceness and it takes grace. There's all sorts of voices they're gonna tell us, don't do that, Barbara, don't do that, Mark. Right? No one's ever done this before. It's not easy. This is not simple. Joining Jesus is not simple. It actually requires enormous love, enormous commitment, enormous integrity, but we want to model an enormous sacrifice. You have to give something up. So wow. So let's let's go into prayer, my friends. And let's bring all of the holy and broken hallelujahs that actually we want to repattern and ask God at right, the infinity of intimacy, who's also the infinity of power, to give us the divine power of the evolutionary impulse to look at ourselves, to face everything and avoid nothing, to be fearless because we know that we're good. We know that we're gorgeous. We know that we're stunning. That's who we are. We are the goodness of reality itself. Where we're madly in love with ourselves. And when we're madly in love with ourselves, we can give up old patterning. It's okay. We don't need to be right to be good. We can give up being right and we can actually claim this new repatterned vision of ourselves, this new identity as homo amor universalis. That's what it means to become a new human and a new humanity. That's what it means. So that's what we're going to pray for. Right? If, if that's okay with everyone, today let's pray for each of us. I'm going to pray for me, Mark. And I'm going to pray for everyone in church. And maybe pray for me and we'll pray for Lisa and Barbara and we'll pray for everyone we know. Let's pray to, to have the power of repatterning, to literally become the new human, so that we in this evolutionary church together can invoke the new humanity in the way that Barbara's going to outline in her sermon. So holy and broken hallelujah, right? In we go. Amen. Oh, my God. Uh oh You need great marketing videos to grow you need great marketing videos. Yay. <laughs> grow your business. With promo, you can create commercial oh level video. Oh my god. There we go. Amen. Yeah. Yay.
friends, right? Let's take it to the tap box and let's be power hungry, right? Let's pray for repatterning. Let's pray for transformation, right? Let's pray to be a new human, to have the power to be a new human, right? Oots, thank you. Oh my God, I pray. Oots, it's so good to see you. I pray for the power to transform myself before I try to transform others and sometimes do it at the same time. Pr clearly, Razi, I pray for the power to transform and repattern all the parts of myself that are still not open, to her outrageous love and grace. Shati, I pray each moment to love each moment open. Love it open. It's one of our principles, right, in evolution. Love it open as my power of transformation explodes. David, I pray that whenever I fall into anxiety, depression, pain, and fatigue, I can call upon the power of evolution as me uniquely and personally, right, to love the moment open, right? And so it is. And Enoch, I pray to be power hungry, right, and transform myself, right? We need to repattern a relationship to power. What other prayers do we have here? Right? Val, right? I pray for the willingness for a calm body mind and for a negotiable love and gratitude. Karen, welcome. I pray that I don't get stuck in a perpetual self-improvement project. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Right? Now as I'm there, I've arrived, right? I'm comfortable in my power. Christine, right? I pray for the power to be open-hearted. Terry, I pray to have courage and energy to bring more of my unloved me into the circle, right? I pray for power to repattern, right? And right in Karen, right? I'm always transforming the world and I'm transforming myself at the same time, right? But transforming myself means just opening my heart, right? More and more and more. To love the uncomfortable Tracy, I pray to transform all the hidden places in me, healing my ancestral lineage, reclaiming my culture. Suzette, I pray for the power to show the value the value of every human by knowing it deeply in myself. Jen, I pray to be empowered, repatterned, and transformed. Right, Beloved Barbara, I pray that my love for me continues and grows and extends to all others. Barbara, lend a week. Carol, I pray to open my heart so that I'm able to transform. Right, and, and there's so many prayers. And everyone, take, take, don't, don't, don't skip it. Right, take a, take a second. Actually write it in the chat box. Right, write your prayer. Right? Whatever your prayers, and as you continue writing your prayers, and when you actually write it, something happens. Something happens in the neuroscience. Right? Something shifts. Something moves. When I actually... So write it on a piece of paper. Next... It right into a higher level of reality that we know from neuroscience and from interior science makes the transformation available. And Brian, welcome, Brian. Welcome. I pray for an endless and self-feeding loop of self-transformation to world transformation. As people keep right, right, writing these gorgeous prayers, right, for the sake of the evolution of love, as these prayers are being written, Barbara's going to take them all as they're being written, right, right? And I have to keep writing, and Barbara's going to go into her sermon, and they're going to resonate with each other, and she's going to lift this all, right, like a prayer to the sky. And I turn my word to you, beloved. <laughs> Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. I want to make a few um, requests here. Last time I spoke about letting the tears in the whole way and leaving nothing out when the tears come in because actually they, they go to exactly where they need to go to free you from exactly what you were holding on to before. And I don't know it's because, if it's because I let the tears in last week or because of the timing on the planet 
But this week, something happened to me that I then want to go over for all of us. And I'm going to uh, say that this particular code mark, if you take it point by point, what it leads to is radical empowerment of that pleasure that is your pleasure of transformation. And that this is actually a code for achieving it. Yes. And, and, and so I, when I started to go over it today, after realizing what was happening to me that I've just written you a long letter about, but just in sum, everyone's transformational purpose is complex. It's not, oh, I just like to get a great, uh, you know, teaching or a great job or somebody's going to give me some money or blah, blah, blah. It's actually filled with complexity to get to the degree of power. And what is the power for? Well, it's the power to express and transform everything. And the reason we have to transform everything now is that everything is in going into dysfunction. We are living in a world where there are so many dysfunctionalities in every field that, that uh, in the traditional mode that the world, as they say, is about to go down to destruction. But on the other hand, there is rising up in every field, in every function, something that's working, and that's about to connect. Now, that's in generically, but what about in us personally? What about the fact that everything that has been challenging or difficult or threatening and that we've responded to in this church with love and faith and openness and clarity, but we don't have to disguise to ourselves if we're feeling terrible. It's awful. I can't stand it, whatever it is. Then, having gone through that with the tears, let's go through this particular code from the point of view of radical power. Because that's what I was thinking of before you declared that last sentence of it. Because that was my homemates. Yeah, my homemates. Because what happened this week, which I won't go into in detail, but to say that about six or seven single things that we have been working on all started to happen simultaneously, all at once. And suddenly it was a convergence of what's emergent. Just like you can have a convergence of what's going down to, to a terrible devolution. This is now on the meta scale. We also can have convergence of what's arising on the meta scale and on the personal scale, just like we have here on this code. And so when I saw it happening, um, and I realized how much of my life had been in these various paths, all of which looked to me like they wouldn't work <laughs> because I'm 90. And so I got started at this very young. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost 90. But I mean... <laughs> I just want you to know if anybody thinks it's taking a long time. It took me a long time. <laughs> I mean, 90 is a long time. I'm saying 90. I'm actually uh, 89 and three quarters. <laughs> no, 88 and three quarters. No, 89 You're and three 88. quarters. You're 88 and three quarters. I'm 88. I'm going to be 89. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, I want you to be holding, as I do this, the possibility that each one of these lines is going to give you a somewhat of a trajectory that then could go into a convergence of radical power for you personally, and then let's say for the church, and then let's say for Eros in humanity, because we might as well take it the whole way as we go down into the personal and the local, because it just as you say here, the, the personal leads to the radical transformation of the whole system if it transforms you, because you can't get transformed personally without going the whole way. And your whole way is a microcosm of the planet's whole way. There's a big statement, Mark. We can <laughs> write that one down. Your personal transformation is a transformation in person of 
the whole system. Because what it takes for you to transform is almost everything inside of you, which is generic for almost everybody. Right. So we are each enormous personal models for each other. And the more we can share this in the church, the more everybody can learn all the different things. And as I say, I don't know anybody that's old in the church, so I have a tremendous prevalence. I mean, I, I'll take my position as, I don't like to call myself an elder, but a newer. That is to say, the older you get, the newer you get. Why? Because evolution is always getting new. So you've had more of it than most. That's really true. Okay. Reality is driven by pleasure. So let's everybody get in touch with the deepest pleasure that is driving your reality. And see if you can bring it to attention and bring it into a feeling level. What is the pleasure that, 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 that your reality is driven by? The highest pleasure is transformation. So now let's imagine ourselves being transformed by our highest pleasure. And the transformation has to have its uniqueness as us. I mean, can you even imagine that going the whole way for you personally and seeing yourself? So every human being is born to effect a unique personal transformation. So I want you to join me in feeling a unique transformation that's uniquely personal as you. That is to say, nobody else could have that particular transformation that's you. And dwell on it for a minute with all the parts of it. Every human being is born to affect a unique personal transformation that is driven by pleasure. Wow. What you begin to see here is the goodness of God. What you begin to see is the goodness of the pattern of creation. What you begin to see here is the divine process of creation that once you catch hold of it, gives you the incentive to go the whole way yourself because it's driven by pleasure. Every human being is born to affect not only a unique personal transformation, but a unique social transformation. Think now of how your personal transformation, whatever it is, driven by your deepest pleasure, actually is affecting a unique social transformation that only you can possibly do. And you think now, what is it that is your greatest transformation that social that's coming from your unique pleasure of transformation that every energy in your entire being is longing to achieve. Everything, everything. Because it's total. Wow. Now wisdom is knowing what is yours to transform and what is not. Wow. What about that, folks? Does anybody ever try to be transforming what is not yours to transform? Has anybody thought about that? Wow. I have. I tried to transform a lot of things that weren't exactly mine to transform, like the political, like the Democratic Party. <laughs> now, why did I want to run for vice president? I had something in me that I actually wanted to give a speech to say the meaning of politics from a platform that was good enough to be heard. And it was. So you have to notice if you're doing something, what is yours to transform? It might be that what you're doing is your unique social transformation, but it may not be objectively what it looks like because it has to transform you 
by doing it, then it transforms the social pattern that you are in. And that's why the vice presidency is a really good example. Everybody now knows, who knows anything about anything I ever done, that the, the democracy has to evolve. And I'll just say, uh, as a little aside, I think we should do a whole church on this. I think it's going to evolve into the pattern of the, of the wheel 2.0 that Mark and I co-created that we would like to offer. And we've talked about it in the collective, but I think it's a pattern we could put ourselves into in the church with our heart's desire, our deepest heart's desire at the center of the wheel, which is called desire. In other words, we have the pattern of the whole system here, as well as everybody knowing how to do it for themselves. And everybody is going to find exactly where they fit best to use uh, Jonas Salk's phrase, it's not survival of the fittest, but survival is what fits best. The highest transformation is the transformation of everything. And that's just exactly what I'm finding out. Because for any one of us to transform the whole way, we have, we have a, a, a antenna throughout the system, system, or we couldn't transform the whole way if the system is dying or the system going to hell one way or the other. Okay, the highest knowing is to know that your radical commitment to your unique transformation is what transforms everything. Radical, let's see here. Yes, Barbara, and it doesn't work, says Susie. What was that? I don't know what you said, Susie, say more. What didn't work, Susie? Yes. The highest knowing is to know that your radical commitment to your radical transformation is what transforms everything. Mm. Yeah, oh, that's right. Other things are not ours to transform, says Liam. Working for our own transformation is not selfish. It is the true gift we can give to God. Yes, Liam, this is so, so true, yes. Amen. Yes. Okay. Now, next. The highest transformation is what transforms us. The highest transformation is the highest form of power. I'm not sure I got that sentence exactly right. That the highest transformation basically is the highest form of power. That, that you, when you actually ex experience this unique transformation that is yours to do and only yours to do and you are transformed your power becomes the power of the system itself through you because you couldn't transform the whole way unless systemically you had connected up to the system i mean i think that's a real truth that none of us could go the whole way unless we were systemically part of the living system and that the living system is affected to completely and totally. And I think that's true, Mark, that, that it's, it's an awesome reality if that's true. So I'm just going to end this by saying, so the highest pleasure is transformation and the highest transformation is power. And if we're going for power for love, we're going power for Eros. Yes? So, yes. that's what we're achieving together, folks. The power of love is the power of the unique transformation of every person going the whole way in this lifetime. And if you would like to contribute to this, yes. To Element of yourself as a power of the universal process of creation embodies uniquely as each one of us. And when we say yes to it, the whole system is in each of us as us as we say yes to our uniqueness. That's a paradox. But if we give funds for this, Don Pet says the highest transformation is reciprocity. It's also known as unconditional love and wisdom. Absolutely. And so let's contribute highest and best that we can to make this work the whole way for us personally. How do we, how do we contribute? Well, we click on what Lisa has just put up there. You see that? That little blue 
Uh, oh, which it's over there. I see it. No, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is it, and I am giving my contribution as I speak, and I would like, we have not done this yet, I would like everybody to invite at least 10 people to come to this church and stay with them because they will be your personal family within the church, and they will also contribute. So let's everybody invite our, our favorite people to join with us and to contribute with us so the church will be a church for all. And I turn my word back to you, Mark. Thank you so much, love. And, and my word is your word and your word is my word. And, and we're, we're, we're modeling together and learning. And we've learned so much in these last years right, about how to join genius and love. And so many, I mean, I mean, I mean thousands, just so everyone knows, right? It's not, it's not small work. I think um, beloved Barbara and I must have exchanged I don't know, 10,000 emails, right, in the last three years, right? In other words, just an enormous, right, to actually go that depth. So let's go this depth together, and, and let's have our word, all of our words together. And, and when I look around, and Barbara, maybe press the mute, love, just so we'll do that. That's what I did also, because otherwise they, those little channels get jammed up. You know how that goes. So let's look at the code together, okay? And what are we doing, friends? What are we doing? I mean, I could not imagine something more exciting, right? We are in the source code of reality and we are participating as outrageous evolutionary lovers in evolving the source code itself for the sake of the evolution of love, right? When, when kids shoot each other, it means they don't know who they are. It means the despair of not having an identity, of not feeling that I have any power in the world, right? I go to shoot because I'm, I'm grabbing for power, right? All acting out is a power grab. Does everyone get that? All acting out is a form of a power grab. And when we don't have authentic power, then we go for pseudo power. When we're not hungry for real power, we don't feed ourselves and nourish ourselves with authentic power, which is the unique expression of the evolutionary impulse, alive and awake in me as my evolutionary unique self, then I actually feed, right? It's the hungry ghosts of Buddhism. I feed on pseudo powers and pseudo power ultimately is devastating and destructive. Suicide bombers, as I've seen go off in school buses in Israel myself, right? right that's right. People shooting up schools, right? Shooting up in all the ways we shoot up, right? Those are all forms of pseudo power, right? But it's not because we're pathological and depraved it's because actually we're healthy and we're craving real power, right? And our culture has deconstructed all forms of authentic, noble power and called them social constructions of reality. And so there's no identity left and there's no universe story, right? And there's no narrative. And so we feel like we're lost in Kafka's trial, right? Right? Not quite sure where to go and none of it makes any sense. And so we desperately, right, reach out for some form of aliveness and power. So let's, let's for the last time together, I'm gonna to resonate at the end with Barbara's resonance at the beginning. Let's read the code again. Okay, that's what we're doing this week. We're actually studying the code and we're awake and we're alive in the code and we're loving each other madly and we're intending for the sake of the evolution of love. Reality is driven by pleasure. What does that mean? It means that allurement is primary. Right? Why are we together in church, friends? Because we're allured to come together. And allurement's beautiful. We hide allurement. We disown allurement. We split off allurement. But here's a sentence. Here's a code. Sally, allurement is primary. There's nothing underneath allurement. That's a code by itself right there. That's one page, evolutionary love codes. Allurement is primary. There's nothing underneath allurement. So pleasure is allurement. And reality is driven by allurement by pleasure. And whether it's the pleasure of the five senses in their authentic forms, whether it's the pleasure of love, affection, relationships, which is level two pleasure, whether it's the pleasure of standing for a cause, right? whether it's the pleasure of true wisdom, right? whether it's the pleasure of unique self-creativity, or it's the pleasure of right, the power of transformation itself. It's all pleasure. The highest. Right, the highest pleasure is transformation. Right, level one pleasure, I just said, five senses. Level two, love, affection, relationships. Right, ordinary, beautiful love and normal relationships, beautiful. Level three pleasure, standing for a cause. Level four pleasure, true knowledge and wisdom. 
of it, which the highest form is enlightenment, knowing my true nature. Level five pleasure, unique self-creativity. With level six pleasure, that's the second sentence in the code. The highest pleasure is transformation. At level six pleasure is the pleasure that I have the power to transform the whole thing. That's the pleasure of knowing that my unrest, your sentence, beloved Barbara, is the evolutionary unrest. Right? It's the pleasure of knowing, the way I say it, is that my yearning right, participates in the yearning right, of all being and becoming itself. Okay, So the highest pleasure is transformation. But we've now added, right, in transformation, right, is the highest form of power. right? Because, And I want to put these three things together this week. And we're going to weave this in the source code. We're now together literally weaving, reweaving the source code of reality. There's a holy trinity here. And I want to put this holy trinity clearly in the space together with beloved Barbara. The holy trinity is pleasure, right? Pleasure, transformation, and power. Pleasure, power, and transformation are a holy trinity that cannot be separated. Pleasure is driven, right, by power. Power, right? Think about the power. Think about it in its shadow side. Think about the power the addict, right? In the shadow side of pleasure, pseudo pleasure moves through everything, overcomes every obstacle in order to get, right, that fix. Or think about the power of true love, right? The power of true love, right? I'm driven by the allurement of true love and I'll turn over the world to get there, right? Right? I've got enormous power, right? And Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy, I love you, man. You were awesome on that guitar. At Woodstock, you were beyond imagination. I wasn't, I wasn't alive, or I actually was just alive, actually, right? But I, I certainly wasn't there. But you said that the world's going to get better when the, the, the power of love is stronger than the love of power. Jimmy, you were awesome on the guitar. Bad dharma, okay? Right? Love and power are not separate, right? Love is power, and power is love. Love is filled with power, right? And we need love to be filled with its power. So pleasure is driven by power. And what pleasure and power move towards is transformation, which means quarks come together and they form a subatomic particle. Subatomic particles, protons, electrons, neutrons come together, they form an atom, right? They're driven by pleasure, by allurement, and they're motivated by the power of evolution itself, which is all of the power in the first nanoseconds of the Big Bang that's running through me as I talk right now, that's running through Barbara, that's running through you as you take notes and listen and talk to your friend and share, right, and share through the rest, right? All of that power is the power of the evolutionary impulse, right? So the highest pleasure is transformation, which is the power, right, of transformation. So what pleasure and power do is they come together and they move us towards creating a new whole, which always happens through transformation. So when I create a new hole that's me, right, I'm transforming. But what I have to do is, Karen, right, you said earlier, and I love that comment, it's not a perpetual self-improvement project. No, 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 there's only one project. There's one transformation that's mine to do. And everyone knows what it is. There's a certain point where I have this optimum point of discomfort, where I'm, where I'm actually, that's the place, I keep falling down in that place, that's the place where I can turn it around. And I never do it all the way, but I spiral up. I'm always, and from that energy, right, that energy, I then take that same energy and I turn it towards the world and I engage in transforming the world. And Oots, I would say it with total mad love and respect, a little different than you did, if that's okay. I don't have to wait to transform myself fully and then transform the world. I can do them together. Move back and forth, right? We're all in perfect vessels for the light. But, I'm, but, I'm, but my personal transformation, when I really get it, if I can actually transform myself, right? If Mark and Don and Barbara and Lisa, we can see each other and see ourselves a little more clearly and transform something in ourselves, give up being right, give up our hidden positions, that personal transformation mystically transforms the whole world. I wanna, we're gonna end with, uh, with you know, how can anyone ever tell you that you're anything, anything less than beautiful, right? But I wanna just end with one sentence. Just I'll put this together, okay? It's a Hebrew sentence. And the sentence is, and I wrote it in the, you know, in the chat box, right, right, holy scroller, right, just a little bit ago, right, and it's, I think, I think they wrote, da ma lamala mimcha, and I saw that you saw it shot, and you said, you know, what does it mean? So maybe you can copy it and write it again, because I'm, I'm now without scroller, right, but if you see it's there, da ma lamala mimcha, right, da, D-A, right, second word, ma, M-A, right, 
limala, right? L e m a l a h, da mala mala. I don't know if anyone's with me here. No one can pick that up. Da mala mala, right? Know that which is above mimcha, right? So, everyone, can anyone catch that phrase? Shati, are you with me here someplace? Claire, somebody? We got it there. There we go. Thank you. Da, get to the bottom. Not quite. We're almost there. Thank you. That's, we're almost there. Da, no. Ma, li, mala. L E M A L A H. Know that which is above mimcha. So the normal way that sentence is translated, it's a third century sentence. It says, da mala mala mimcha, know that which is right above you. Know that which is above you. That's the way it's normally read. Know that which is above you. But the evolutionary mystics translate it differently, right? They say, da mala mala, know that everything that is above, da mala mala, know everything that's above, colon, Mimcha comes from you. And that's an ontological statement. It's not psychological. Right? Dama la mala, know everything that happens above. The entire movement, the entire evolutionary pattern of all of reality. Dama la mala, know everything that's above. Mimcha comes directly from your personal transformation. That's actually the ontological truth of reality. Your personal transformation directly in an unmediated form and unequivocally ripples through all of cosmos and literally reworks and repatterns and rewires the inner source code of reality itself. And I'm gonna tell you something in the last sentence, and I know we're over time, so we'll finish right here, okay? But just track this with me, right? If I get up and give a big speech in front of 10,000 people, 20,000 people, right? The biggest speech I've ever given has been in front of about 40, 50,000 people at a festival. So I'm speaking in front of 50,000 people, right? And I'm giving this great speech and everyone's blown away. I've moved almost nothing in the cosmos if I'm on automatic. I'm doing my great speech. That's what I'm doing, that's what I do. I'm declaring reality and I'm excited. And of course people are impacted and it's beautiful. And it's great and, and lots of things are moved, right? But actually, actually, actually it doesn't have the effect you think it does, right? But if I'm in my room by myself, and I'm fighting the sense of inadequacy and depression. And I can actually go in and actually find the truth, the truth of the fact that I'm not separate from all of reality. And that everything that I'm being lived by a larger love. And that every place I've been, I needed to be. And then I walk outside after I've kind of found this place of deep, profound, right, love in myself. And I get on a bus. And I've got this huge smile on my face that came through my transformation, my personal transformation. And I say hello to the bus driver. And we have this moment between us and that we're both transformed in that moment from a mystical, ontological, evolutionary perspective that may well transform reality more than the 50,000 person speech. That's true, right? That's dignity. That's power. That's real power. It's actually knowing the power lives in us, Oriana. Right? right? And the whole world's a stage, said Shakespeare, and he was right. We're always on stage. We're always giving a great speech, right? right? The great speeches in history were not the ones that were collected by William Sapphire in his book, Great Speeches in American History, right? The great speeches in history were collected, they were given, right, between lovers late at night at three in the morning, between friends talking on the phone, between, right, a, a, a father and a daughter at a kitchen table, between people taking a walk, right? They were given in conversations with ourselves, right? I have power. I'm power hungry. And I look at you and I say, oh my God, I love you madly. I love you madly, right? And in that mad love of self and mad love of other, and knowing that we have power, we're not powerless. The kids that are shooting each other, what we have to transmit to them, it's that entire generation is, you are, you are power, right? Power is not abuse. It's not the, the negative, bad, masculine power. Power is beautiful. Men and women all have power, right? And that power can reshape reality. How can anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than beautiful? Next week, we're going to end perfectly on time. Apologize for the, the, the overflow of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How can anyone ever tell you? No. Thank you, everyone. We apologize for going over my responsibility. Apologies. Have the most gorgeous week ever. Let's love it open. Love you madly, Barbara. Love you madly, Lisa. Love you madly, everyone.